Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is the pre-season episode for season number three. If you guys did miss the previous episode where we delved into an all-new feature that I have created for this game, the Build Your Own Engine Mode for F1 23 My Team Career Mode, then be sure to go check that full video out to get the full explainer of this all new concept where we are building our own engine from scratch over the course of season three, ready for 2026, which is season four in game for the new F1 engine regulations. But with that major bit of gameplay and admin taken care of in yesterday's video, we can now move into the traditional pre-season for season three. And of course, we are gonna have to take into account now building that engine in terms of the money we're spending in this episode ahead of the season and of course over the whole thing entirely but before we start discussing any of that it's the usual thing we need to now look at the driver market and signing a brand new teammate yep Daniel Ricciardo will be departing this team and I've got my eyes on one Pierre Gasly, the man who won a race last season in the Alpine on the last lap in the last corner of the Italian Grand Prix to make it two wins at Monza. He was, uh, you've got to admit, the breakout star of last season, really. So many top fives, couple of podiums in there, a race win in an Alpine that came out of nowhere. Yes, Ocon did perform a few times in the Alpine towards the end of the year. That team just came out of nowhere, really, with a good performance. But Gasly, a specific specifically really shone out to me and I think to you guys as well and you know in terms of the F1 game it's been a long old while since I have actually partnered up and teamed up with Pierre Gasly we've had much history with this driver in game as an AI driver maybe some questionable history in years gone by on really old F1 games but on this game he's excited me in season two he seems to be the next hot prospect I think with our team I think he can perform really well going Going into this season, he is going to be 99 focus because of how well he did. That is incredible to have a naturally focused AI like that before we've even done our own kind of HQ facility amendments on him to boost his focus even more. He's an 89 rated, so he'll definitely be towards 99 rated with our HQ facility. So we're going to go ahead and actually start a bit of a bidding war with Alpine to secure his services. It's the first time we've had to do this on F123 where we have to go through negotiations, put in our bids, and I'm just going to try and lowball as much as we can, run down the timer until we get that under consideration, finalizing the details, and then bagging ourselves the French F1 race winner from last season. Pierre Gasly is going to be an Arava Archer Racing driver for season three, 99 rated, 99 focus. That is going to be a big plus for us. But whilst we are stealing one of Alpine's star drivers away from last season, they will be getting something in return because in conjunction with this driver transfer deal, the story here is going to be that I am going to sign Renault as our power unit provider for this season. In a combined broker deal, in exchange for being able to sign Pierre Gasly, we are paying Alpine a couple of extra million on top of that to sweeten the deal and agreeing that they will power us so they get a second team on the grid powered by Renault that's just double the amount of research they can do then and development with their engine tech and, and of course at the same time that comes with then the partnership we had with Honda is over at the news that we were going to be abandoning Honda altogether and making our own power unit for 2026 Honda no longer wanted to be with us and they wanted to focus on the partners that they do have in Aston Martin as a spear head going into 2026 and beyond. So that's our teammate and power unit sorted out. But before we get to the car, we've got a little bit of, you know, pre-season over the winter break admin to do with upgrades. Of course, we had that ultimate chassis upgrade that failed going into Abu Dhabi. We could repurchase that and get it guaranteed in, but it does cost 1,100 uh, R&D points. And we are actually the second best chassis on the grid. So I was actually hesitant to go ahead and repurchase that because we 
we don't really need to address the chassis department then, clearly. The aero department, though, is a different story. We've really slipped down the order compared to other teams. We're in the bottom half of the of, of the chart, really, for aero. So I thought, let's go ahead and spend some R&D on a major front and rear downforce upgrade. Now, that already is going to play into, though, the building our own engine feature. Because I've spent there, you know, over 3,000 R&D points. And those that, that could have gone towards maybe one of these components of our new engine for 2026. The engine block fuel systems ERS. A reminder from the previous video that you've hopefully watched. For a low tier component of the engine for all of these. It's going to cost us 2,000, 3,000 for the mid and then 4,000 for high. But I'm choosing right now just to spend a bit of R&D on, on season 3's car on the aero. Because of course we still want to go for a championship in this season. You know. Now, that's the, the thing all F1 teams have to balance in real life. They have to continue developing the car in the current year and look towards the future as well. So in terms of my game plan then from this pre-season video to round one, two, three, I think we'll start setting aside some R&D to put towards this engine build. I'll be updating you guys with some visual graphics of the progress we're making towards the first tier of those components, the low tier 2,000 points for each of those uh, categories. And then as we go on through the season, Season, we'll have to make some difficult decisions about when we're spending R&D on our current car and continuing to put stuff towards our engine. But with that, now, speaking of our current car, say hello to our new challenger for Season 3. Yes, the iconic... Golf livery is with Arava Archer Racing. Now, no longer on the Williams team. It's on our car. A very different color palette to what we had in Season 2. Also with a different finish on the paint as well to make it stand out and pop a little more, bit more compared to the shinier chrome we had with the green. But at the same time, you'll notice if you look close enough, I've kept a few little nods in the subtle decal patterns over the chassis, the front wing, the engine cover that we had from 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 the get-go from season one I've really liked kind of keeping that same identity through all the different liveries whilst adding a unique touch to each one for each season obviously gone are now the Honda and Mugen logos and now we've got a Renault badge on the front nose cone on the rear wing and a few other sponsors to add in to really show you know being you know the reigning constructors champions being the reigning drivers world championship attracts some new sponsors. I really like how it's come out in game and I hope you guys do as well. So do let me know in the comments below what you make of the season three livery. The golf livery is upon us. And I think I think it was time. It's been a while since we've done a golf livery ourselves. And the last one we did was two games ago on F1 2021. And I think just before season four, where we partner with a real car brand to make our new engine for 2026, I think this was a nice time to do this sort of livery and design for one of the seasons. And with that, I think now is a good time to take you through the all-new custom calendar as well, because that is all change in terms of how it's looking from round one to round number 16. You may have noticed in the bottom left on that career hub, Las Vegas is now the opening round for this season. Yes, we all know the amount of money, ridiculous money that is being spent on the real life Las Vegas Grand Prix this year. So we're saying here in game, they've splashed the big cash to get the number one spot on the calendar, they will be hosting the opening round of this season. We're then going to go to an early Brazilian Grand Prix, throwing it back to old school Formula 1, where the Brazilian Grand Prix actually used to be one of the earlier rounds in the season, before hopping over to Australia, and then to the all-new Singapore circuit, which has now been altered in-game, just ha as it has been in real life. Then we start the European portion of the season, from Spain to Monaco to Portugal and Austria to get to the halfway point in the season. Then we go to the home GP, the British Grand Prix, Belgium to Monza, over to Canada, over to Japan, and then it's going to be a Middle Eastern stint to end off the season from Qatar to Jeddah to Abu Dhabi. So those are the tracks, but now let's take a look at all the different cars and drivers that will be traveling around that circus of Formula One. Of course, we've gone through our own team, Arab Archer Racing, and an all new look with the golf livery myself alongside now a 99 rated Pierre Gasly 99 focus as well I'm so excited to see how he's going to perform 
and how we're going to do balancing, obviously, building our own engine for the following year. We've got also upgrades to make on this year's car and also an all-new power unit to try and take care of. Moving on to our rivals from last season, Red Bull Racing turn up in a very strikingly different look. It's the glitch camo livery for Red Bull this season. They retain, of course, as you would have expected, Max Verstappen and Lando Norris, one of the strongest driver pairings on this grid. Lando Norris was our title rival last season. He just didn't quite make it, just like his uh, fellow teammate Max Verstappen in season one's title fight. So both of them have failed to win a championship on this year's game so far. They're still going to be one of the best teams on the grid going into this brand new season. And they're both still very highly focused. Lando 88, Max Verstappen 83. I mean, Max is still rated up to 98 rating. So there's no reason why either of these two drivers shouldn't be there in the title fight. But something tells me there's going to be some stiff, stiff competition. And that includes the Papaya team, McLaren, who do surprisingly, maybe for some of you, retain Valtteri Bottas and Oscar Piastri. Because, of course, Lewis Hamilton retired. A lot of you were thinking that maybe Bottas could have been a good fit going back to his old team. But no, McLaren have decided to stick with Bottas and Piastri. And Bottas has not jumped ship. And why would he? McLaren, if you watch the end of Season 2, they looked incredibly quick. And remember now, with the latest patch, McLaren have actually got even quicker. So McLaren could be one of the top, top teams going into Season 3. And Piastri and Bottas, if they, if they start the season how they ended, they're going to be such a strong duo in that McLaren car. It's going to be very, very exciting indeed. But yeah, that maybe did leave the Silver Arrows in a bit of a pickle that one of their old drivers didn't want to come back to them because they have lost an eight-time world champion in Lewis Hamilton, who has retired from Formula 1. They have retained the services of George Russell, of course. He really became a team leader last season, whilst Lewis lost motivation and focus and pace and just a bit of luck, really. And they've had to get a bit desperate. They've had to employ Mick Schumacher, their reserve driver. They've had to promote him to a full-time seat because I don't think they could get any of the other top names. You know, Verstappen was going to stay put at Red Bull. Lando, having just been a title fight, staying put. The Ferrari drivers seemingly didn't want to jump ship either. So who else were they going to really go for? It seems like they've just had to actually just go with what they've got left with because there was no top talent, top name that wanted to jump into the Mercedes because, well, as much as they maybe did look quick at times last season, there's still really no proof that they are back to their very best at all. So it might be another bit of an up and down season for Mercedes. And whilst Mercedes is looking forward, it seems like the team formerly known as Alfa Romeo, Sauber now, are looking to the past because they have signed Sergio Perez back to their team alongside Nico Holcomo. Both these drivers have previously driven for Sauber and Sauber now don a retro livery, throwing it back to some of those good old 2010 days with the V8 era with the white and black split livery. I, I love this look. I mean, Sauber those days, I feel like they were the true underdogs. They really captured a lot of fans' hearts. And seeing Perez back in those colours alongside Hulkenberg is really quite cool. And this is, of course, the last season that Sauber are going to operate uh, by themselves before they become Audi, of course, when they enter Formula 1 in Season 4. So this is a bit of a stopgap year for them, but one that's going to be quite cool seeing them in that livery. But the Alfa Romeo name is not leaving Formula 1 in this series. Making the real-life rumours true, Alfa Romeo are partnering with Haas to become Alfa Romeo Haas F1 team. They have retained Kevin Magnussen and Logan Sargent, the same pairing they had in Season 2. And really, this year will be trying to punch up a little bit more in the midfield and maybe some funding from Alfa Romeo to have the naming rights could help them out in that development. In previous F1 games, we've seen Haas become this dark horse team that's come out of nowhere, but so far we haven't really seen anything similar on this year's F1 game. So they're going to be in a tough old fight. It's very close, even at the bottom of this F1 grid, but in an all-new look, could it be an all-new phase 
for this American outfit. We're going to rattle through the next two teams because, frankly, both of them really haven't changed too much in terms of the liveries, driver lineups, and maybe where they are going to be on the grid. Potentially, maybe the next team might, but Alpha Tauri, really, as they are in real life, in the game, really struggling to make any sort of impact on the championship and running order. They retain Yuki Tsunoda and have signed Liam Lawson to their team after losing Sergio Perez. Both Red Bull Junior drivers in real life in the Junior Red Bull team on the grid. And we move on to Williams, who are now back in their traditional normal livery, because of course we are the ones now with the main big golf sponsorship. We've got the golf livery, and Williams will go back to just having a small golf sticker on their rear wing. They retain Lance Stroll from last season, but they do now have Teopor Chair in their car. A very hot prospect from Formula 2, but in the Williams car, will he be able to shine? We're going to have to see. But we now come to an exciting team in a different shade of blue. Alpine, who retain Esteban Ocon, but of course have lost the services of Pierre Gasly because we've stolen him away from their team. They have signed their old driver, Daniel Ricciardo. It's the old school pairing from the lockdown years, Ricciardo and Ocon. And to be honest, a lot of people maybe have thought what would have happened if Ricciardo stayed put at what was then Renault. Well, well, now we're going to get a chance to see how Daniel fares back with this team, now known as Alpine. And if you watch last season, they actually were a bit of a surprise, you know. Gasly won that race with Alpine. Ocon even started to put in some really decent results at the end of the season. So who knows? They're both pretty well focused. Ocon very much so, 95 focus. So both of them, you know, 87, 88 rated. Who knows? They could really put some surprise performances in and shock a lot of people. Maybe ruffle some feathers of the likes of Ferrari, Mercedes, or even Aston Martin. And speaking of Aston Martin, powered by Honda, of course, since last season in an all-new white and green livery, they retain Fernando Alonso and Alexander Albon. There was no reason to change up. Alonso came back to Aston Martin in Season 2, having left for McLaren in the middle of season one, of course, because he believed in the project. He believed in the new improved Aston Martin powered by the Japanese manufacturer. And it, it, even though it maybe wasn't incredible for them last season, towards the end of it, they started to show signs of finally getting it all together. You know, consistent top fives, being there, kind of being a nuisance to those of us in the championship fight. So Alonso, he's still kicking it at his old age now, three seasons in, 90 rated, 91 focus, the same for Albon 91 focus so who knows what they could do they just need to solve the operational and maybe quality to race pace and they could really mix it up potentially with some of the biggest names in Formula 1 and speaking of biggest names in Formula 1 we come to maybe the biggest name in Formula 1 last but not least it's Scuderia Ferrari who of course still have Leclerc and Carlos Sainz at the helm in an all new Monza special red and yellow Livery. Carlos Sainz and Leclerc for the third time will be trying to consistently fight for a Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. Both times, both seasons on this series so far, they've started off so strong. They've been up there. They've been leading the championship at one point in some cases, and then they just really fall off a cliff with about a third of the season to go. So third time lucky for the Scuderia this time round? I guess we're going to see, because this is what the R&D chart looks like then going into this new season. McLaren are the best team on the grid by a decent margin as well. So Piastri and Bottas are going to be licking their lips, followed by a very close pack of Red Bull, Mercedes, Aston Martin, Ferrari and ourselves. We've got five teams there so closely together. Unfortunately, we're on the bottom end of that pack. So... That's going to make things difficult. If we want to seriously fight for a second world championship in the drivers and constructors, it's going to make our life even harder trying to put R&D and money towards building our own engine for the following season if we want to improve this car enough to be in a title fight. So that's actually going to doubly make this a proper challenge this season to balance the books, balance all this different kind of gameplay and things we have to worry about. And then you've kind of got a second bottom pack then. Surprisingly, Alpine fall away a bit over the winter break. They're closer to Williams than they are to the kind of top pack there. And then you've got Haas slap bang in the middle of uh, those two teams and then AlphaTauri and Sauber 
bring up the rear. So that's been a pretty jam-packed preseason episode. We're going to finally finish it off quickly by just allocating a certain amount of money to put towards our engine build. So in total, the new engine's going to cost us 50 million. I showed you a preview of, in, the, in the previous video about you know us paying out full 50 million, left with 10 million. But in reality here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pay 40 million of the 50 and I'm going to leave myself 10 million to save up later in the season. What that will do is it will give us 20 million or so to still play around with, maybe purchase another HQ facility to help us in this season and I'm confident that we can definitely save that last 10 million by the end of season three. So you're going to see the number on the top go from 60 point something million down to 20 million and we have now banked in 40 million towards our brand new engine in season four gives us a bit of cash to play around with and we'll start playing around with that cash in round number one uh, next time out if you guys have enjoyed it and are excited for round one at las vegas then be sure to hit that like button let me know what you make of anything in this video what are you most excited about going into this new season and if you aren't around here then do get subscribed like i said for round one at the las vegas grand prix till then hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day goodbye